Hello, welcome. Welcome to our drum channel. Hello, welcome. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So in this episode, Lee the drum goes all jangly while Lee the spray shows you how to get a good shine. Well, so what we've got today is a set of little jangles that go on the top of your hi-hats. Now at Carriard, if we can, we like to try and support small entrepreneurs and all the rest of it. So there's a young man by the name of Paul, look, and he's got his products called Paul E. And what he's come up with is these little wooden jangles and tambourines that sit, as I said, on to the hi-hats. Now the reason we like these, they're really solid for a start, made of wood, so they look pretty, but it's the fact that they've got a good sound to them, but they're nice and small, so they don't get in the way of your hi-hats. So you can put these that way. If I was to put one on, click that like that, so you can play, and that gives you a sort of a softer sound. I'm just gonna click on it now. But if I swing it over, put that onto the top, like so, you get more of a drive because of the way the jangles are on the top now. You get a slightly louder sound. But they're really nice because if you're playing, as you can see there, nothing is in the way. So it's nice because there's a half moon facing away from you. And therefore, you're not interfering with anything that you do playing. Even if you play open-handed and so on, you can always turn these in such a way that they are out of the way of the playing style. Get them nice and high. You can play there, you can play here, you can play here, whatever you want to do. So we've got a couple of different sounds. So for an example, aluminium one. So let's give a, a sound on that. We've got Copper, you see, more of a heavier sound. Then we've got stainless steel, quite a dry sound on that one. And then we've got nice steel ones. Play high and clicky or washy with without and of course because it's a standard clutch one takes a second to drop it on or put it down beside you when you don't want to use it for certain songs but certainly Interesting, really nice, very sweet, great little things. And if you want to go the full off much more, you can then have a much larger one. Again, it can be put either way. So good on Paul for developing these, and they're installed with us now. And that one, wow, really proper jungle, isn't it? One final thing, because of the made of the woods that they are made of, they're very, very light. What I don't like with some tambourines when you clamp to there, the metal ones sometimes get a bit buckled and damaged. Uh, there's a small frame on there, or they're a whole ring, so there's too much. You can catch your stick on them, and if you put the heavier ones on, they weigh in down on the hi-hat and on obviously the, the tension of the pedal. But these are super light super easy to use and yeah great little sound so well done so get in touch with us on www.carriotdrumshop.com to buy yours hi folks lee the spray here from carriot custom drums so we often get asked about these little babies being you know cleaning up pitting of hardware 
how to get it really good. We predominantly look after the shells for customers, like the spraying, as you can see here, and we get the customers to clean their own hardware because it is time consuming. So I know there's lots of products out there and there's lots of ideas of how you can do it. For an example, water and wire wool or water and uh, tin foil. But I, tend, I don't tend to lean down that way. What I go for is basically car products. Like these, for an example, we use these all the time here at Carriot. These are the 3M versions because they're the large tubs. Now, if obviously you're just doing your own drum kit, you don't want loads, you might use a smaller product like this. So we're not sponsored by these. We're just showing you what we use. So we can have a coarse cut, so it's called extreme, and then it can go to fine, and then this one removes holographic marks from blacks when we're doing piano black. So we use various creams for various processes here. But you can buy small little tubs like this on all of your normal online or, or local stores. If you can buy local, it's always better. So you can get that. That's a rubbing compound, so it would mean that would be a bit more abrasive. And that one is then Supreme Polish. It's really, really, really fine. The beauty of these is they're not meant to mark or scratch in any way because they are for car products and paints and lacquers. So they're not going to damage your chrome. And that's the beauty of them. So I took this little baby, which you can see, it's really quite pitted and ugly looking to that. And it's come up really lovely and shiny. And again, if I concentrated on it a little bit longer, I'd probably remove every single dot from it. So naturally, you'd want to take the nuts and the bolts off, get rid of everything, so you've just got one product. So there's two ways of doing it, really. Elbow and grease. Hmm, called elbow grease in many parts of the world, where you would put on your rubbing compound, you put a spit of that always onto the cloth rather than on the product itself, and you literally need to scrub quite hard. So I'll just show you a quick demonstration here. Put a little spit, not too much. You don't want to overkill. You just want a nice little spit on there. Go onto it and just keep rubbing. And it'll take you a while, and you've got to press nice and firm. And as you can see, it comes up a treat, and you just keep on going until, basically, you remove all the dots. Now, sometimes you might find some dots have gone in and they're a little bit harsh. So I would leave, you know, you're not going to get every single one off. But look at the difference in seconds. Wipe it with a dry cloth and that is it. And if you want to go then uh, a little more, you use the Supreme Polish. This might leave a few little sort of what we call like spider web look to it. You'll just get a little bit of um, effect on there because it is a slight abrasion on that. So then when you put this one on, this is to remove that down again. And the chrome will take it. The other thing you can do is to treat yourself to a small little product like this. And it comes with a sponge. And the beauty with these is, of course, is it speeds everything up for you. So you could put a spit of that on, rub it in, you think, you know, you need to be a care, uh, careful, obviously, anything that is spinning catches. So I always work away from the product, you see, never into the product to cut. So if I go that way, because this is a smooth edge, I'll walk, work down, obviously take your rubbers off and all your parts. Don't go trying to polish around items like that. It'll snag, catch, rip, or it'll hurt your blooming hand. So I always go that way. And as I said, I will work down. So if I was to pop these off quickly and do the screws here. And then I'll just wind that up a little bit. Make sure I'm nice and firm. Ideally, again, you want to, if you've got a small vise, you can either put this into the vise and then use the polisher onto that. Or the item onto that, I should say. Or you want to try and have that held down. Be very, very careful if you do it this way. So keep it on small, just gentle. So that won't hurt your hand there, look. And I just keep working until that's gone. But again, look, I'm working away. And then when I'm ready, I will turn it over and I'll work away the other direction. So as smooth as you can be working from middle to outside, just so it doesn't snag and then hurt your blinking fingers. And you can see, actually, as I'm working it, you can actually see the, the dirt being dragged off. And then I would put the Supreme Polish on again, and then away to go. And I tell you now, for an old drum kit, it's been around for a few years, that comes up really lovely. So that's how you do it. So again, if you've got a small product, 
like that, that you can just gently sit the device, then it gives you extra control because you can then just work your hands and airs a little safer. If not, try and hold that down or do what I just did. Or you have to do the cloth. So for me, that's the nicest way. These are the kindest products on the market purely because they are designed to do so. Now others use things like Brasso, which is again great. The problem is it can uh, become really dirty. If you ever put Brasso onto symbols, it's all, you just get black everywhere. But these, as I said, are designed to be very kind because they are for lacquers. So that's my suggestion. I appreciate there's loads of others out there, but the proof is in the pudding. So here's an example we did on a drum hoop. So if you just look at the dirt that is on there, and then we compare it to there. Look how clean that's come up. Beautiful. And that is just simply one cloth, one compound, and a little bit of hard work. It doesn't take long at all. Just work your way in, and that is how you get your hardware uh, looking really good, but also good maintenance for your hardware to stop them picking. Remember, it's getting the dirt off because it's the dirt that causes the rusty marks on there, cleaning the dirt off. Okay, so get cleaning. Thank you.